I'm going to be showing you how you can actually look inside of a scratch file and see everything that makes it up and even edit the scratch file from a text editor without scratch. So first thing you want to do is you can create a scratch file. Um, so I'm just going to create one and I'm going to do a few simple stuff. It's just going to be like one green flag clicked. Move 10 steps, think my variable for two seconds, set my variable to hello. So, really easy. I'm just gonna also do set go to zero, zero in the beginning. And yeah, that's cool. And maybe we'll record a quick thing. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. So I just have this little recording. Now you do is save to your computer. So it's gonna save as Scratch Project SB3. And oops, I don't want to open it. And if I just use the finder, I can look at it. And a scratch file is basically actually just a zip renamed. So I can rename it back to a zip. Oops. I think capital zip is okay. And um, you can zip it, unzip it, and then open it. Now I think on Windows, zipping and unzipping a file is a little bit different, but on Mac it's pretty easy. Now if you look at some of the WAV files, you can see they're um, basically the sounds. This is the sprite, the scratch cat. That's the popping sound. This is the <coughs> meow sound. And then this is the me speaking sound. Hello, hello. And that's, now this is the JSON file. So what you wanna do is you can open up the JSON file in a version of Visual Studio Code. Visual Studio Code, yeah. And then VS Code. So if you go to VS Code.dev, it opens up a browser version of VS Code. Now you could just open it up with VS Code on your computer, but most people don't have that. So I'm gonna open a file, and I'm gonna open Scratch Project 2, and then open JSON. So right now it's just a really long string. I'm gonna reformat it using Option Shift F. So I think it's Alt Shift F or maybe Control Shift F for maybe Windows. So right now there's an array of targets or like a list of targets. Targets is basically all the sprites. So as you can see, there's this is Sprite One. I just collapse this, that's sprite one, and this is sprite two. So there's two sprites, the stage and the, the cat. So I'm gonna open up the stage and you, and you can see all the global variables are stored in the stage. So the stage has a section called variables. This is the ID of the variable. This is the name of the variable and the value of the variable is hello. And this is the stage, the costumes, just a bunch of blank stuff. I'm gonna close this up. Now I'm gonna look at the scratch. It's not a stage. The name is Sprite One. You can you can rename that in here. Name it to Scratch Cat. And here are the variables. These are the blocks. Now the way the blocks work is they're basically chained together. So the first one will have an ID. And so the second one, each block has a separate random ID. And they're each separate, but the way Scratch noses are connected is because of this parent thing. It says the parent is this ID, which is the same as this one. So if I change this to hello, or like this, it will no longer work because it's not the same ID. So if I want it to work, all I have to do is copy it 
and have the parent be back in here. And it also has a next. So this one says event flag, one flag clicked. That's the one flag clicked one. And this is the exposition on like the scratch box canvas. And then this is opcode is like the name of it. Motion go to X, Y. If we don't want it to be zero, we can change it to a hundred. And then this can be a hundred the X and the Y, the inputs. This is the move 10 steps. Maybe make it negative 100 steps. You can really just edit anything you want in here. Then there's the set variable to, um, which is set variables to allow. I'm gonna say goodbye now. And then Yeah, and then over here, this is the think for a number of seconds. And the message is, the first one is basically the variable, the input of it. And the second one is basically what's underneath it. What's underneath the variable if you remove it. So this, this is the variable, my variable, and that's basically all of them. Here's the sounds um, with the link to the ID or the file name. But now, if you want to convert it back into a scratch project, I'm going to save this. And then I'm going to, I'm going to re-zip it. So I can just delete this one. And then rename it to, oh no re-zip it by compressing it, then renaming it to an SB3, use SB3, then loading from your computer and clicking on this SB3 thing. So now it says goodbye and it moves minus 100 steps. Wait, why, is it, why did it go up? Oh no, yeah, never mind. Should move minus 100 steps. Weird. Try to move minus 100 steps. Hmm. Strange. But, yeah. And if you want to learn more about it, you can go to um, Scratch Wiki. Um, I think that's the. Yeah. And then I can search. Um, scratch file format and you can look at how the json file works and everything inside it now i'm actually planning to make um a, an image to scratch blocks so that if you import an image it converts it to scratch blocks that's just a cool idea you could do with this where you like um where you make it, where you programmatically, yeah. Where you procedurally, where you procedurally um, create scratch blocks, which could be cool. So yeah, that's the end of this tutorial. If you wanna learn more, look at this link. And yeah.